What's up everybody, I'm Joneser and this is mo Joneser here on YouTube and today we've got a Masterverse Hordak so without further ado What's up, everybody? It's Jones, or your favorite comic book guy. So let's do this! Okay, we've got our Hordak here, but before we get into him, if you like Masters of the Universe related content, comic book hauls, or just listening to the sound of my lovely voice, you should consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out. At the time of the recording of this video, we are closing in on 200 subscribers, and we're really, really working to get up to that thousand uh, milestone, and I think we can do it. With your help, we can definitely do it. So anyways, like our previous videos before where we dug into She-Ra and uh, He-Man, this is going to be done in much the same style. It's not going to be so much of a toy unboxing or review, but just a look back in time to the history of these characters and how I discovered them and uh, what they mean to me. So I'm going to take you back on a trip to 1984. Well, it must have been my birthday or Christmas or something, but I remember getting this guy and the other three uh, Horde members pretty right away. So I don't know uh, how that happened, but there's Hordak and there is the Horde. And they were a new faction in the Masters of the Universe lore, which was pretty cool. Um, their origins come out in this mini comic and without She-Ra. It was just He-Man, the Horde, and Skeletor. And what was neat was that in itself that the Horde was against He-Man, and they were against Skeletor. So they kind of like stood on their own. They look like creatures from like a monster movie or something. Like here you have Mantana, who's like a bug man, and he was a very unique looking figure among Masters of the Universe figures. Same with Leech, he was like a creature of the Black Lagoon, you know, and again, he just looked very different. You know, the evil master of power suction. And then you have Grizzlor here, who's like a hairy figure. And I mean, these weren't your typical Masters of the Universe looking figures, you know? You know, like a Wolfman guy. And then you got Hordak here, who's like Dracula. And, uh, you know, it kind of made the, like a horror movie vibe. And, uh, you know, in a world without She Ra, where they just fought He Man and Skeletor, these guys were like characters out of a monster movie. You know, for whatever reason, they all had crossbows. Like, you know, they didn't have the technology like the later She-Ra cartoon. They must have all been like big fans of Chewbacca or something or watched Star Wars too much because they're all about the crossbows. And uh, like in my previous video, I would said with She-Ra that the Horde kind of came in with that. But I preferred them in the original way that I learned of them, you know, with the uh, He-Man and Skeletor. When I was a kid... I really, really wanted a Fright Zone, like super bad. And as an adult, when I got some adult money, I really, really got one. I mean, this thing was cool. I mean, yeah, it could be argued that there were all the action was in the front, but it had this tree that like grab you, and uh, they had a little cage they could put the uh, their enemies in, and uh, there was like a puppet you could squeeze your hand into, reach through the hole, and uh, grab your uh, enemy. It was cool. They had other characters or members in their group. Moduloc was pretty cool. He came apart. And uh, they had the Monstroid, which is another vehicle for them. You know, and they just kind of expanded on them. You know, Mantazor was another favorite of mine. It was like a mount for Hordak, you know, much like Panthor or Battle Cat for He-Man and uh, Skeletor. I got this from my grandmother around Christmas time. And now how cool was this thing? The Slime Pit. I mean, this toy was epic. I mean, even look at the box art here. I mean, Buzz Off's definitely not having a very good time there. And uh, you got Beast Man from the box art just getting demolished. I mean, what kid wouldn't want this thing? It's just super, super, super cool. 
You know, and I highly recommend, if you haven't seen it, to check out Pixel Dan's video on the Horde Slime Pit. Where Lyric and I have watched it a bunch. Now, you got some early concept art here of Hordak, and you could tell that the uh, material was kind of in flux. They hadn't really quite figured out what they were going for with them yet, and they eventually got on to the version of them which we all know and love, and uh, there he is. There's Hordak. Now, as I said before, Hordak is introduced later in the She-Ra series, and this toy is heavily based on that, but Hordak has appeared in many other versions, some better than others. In early 2000, Mike Young's uh, Masters of the Universe had Hordak in there. He uh, looked pretty cool, and uh, he was kind of tied into uh, Skeletor's origin, which uh, we'll get more into that when I do my Skeletor video. <laughs> Look at that floating head. That's just crazy, isn't it? Well, um, the version of the Horde we got there was one from out of the past. So they had battled uh, King Grayskull back in time. And, uh, you know, their, their powers were pretty much the same. But what I liked is that we got kind of the horror movie looking vibe out of them like I'd thought of as a child. It would have been neat to see where they were going to go with that. But uh, the series was canceled before they could get to the Horde. Well, then later, DC Comics took on Masters of the Universe, and we got the Horde in that. And he was very different in there, too. They had him more like a vampiric, godlike being who was just like ultimate. A little overpowered for my taste. And then we got the Netflix She-Ra series, which, as I said before in my She-Ra video, I was not a fan. I mean, this Horde act just looked silly to me. And the show in itself was just not the she-ra i was looking for i mean with compared to these three I and mean, i'll take the middle one i guess i mean they never made hordak look silly before right i mean this was supposed to be a horror movie character you can't just make him look ridiculous and have get away with it can you can you <laughs> well i guess i'd be remiss if i didn't mention the kevin smith tease at the end of masters of the universe revelation and they had a comic book series that kind of showed the horde in the prequel of that series and they looked pretty good in there so i guess we're gonna have to see what they're like for the next part of that so you saw hordak through my eyes you saw his past his concept his present and a possible future so let's get this guy out of the box and check this one out huh well before we pop him out of the box we better look at him one more time in it and you know um, I like the uh, side piece here. It looks just like it came out of the Filmation show, which is pretty cool. And then the back artwork looks like more like the mini comic to me, even though he has the Filmation colors. And uh, when he gets out, you know, my first impression is, you know, we get a lot of accessories, a lot of bang for your buck. Hey, what the heck is this? Hey, mine's dirty. Come on, Mattel. That is messed up. All right, uh, a little bit of Dawn dish soap and an electric toothbrush later, and that's acceptable. And uh, yeah, he got a lot of accessories, three hands, an extra arm, a blast effect. I mean, you got the shield, you got his crossbow. I mean, this is pretty cool. You're, you're getting a lot, of, a lot of value here. You know, you could take the cape off, get a different look. He looks awesome. And the cape comes off pretty easy. You take the little headpiece off and uh, the head off, and it got the little three prongs. And you just slide the cape on and off. So pretty easy. Um, my only complaint would be, you know, it just kind of droops. It doesn't hang over the shoulders. But, you know, it still looks pretty cool. I mean, look at him. It's Hordak. Hordak looking awesome. You know, and I really like that he's got the filmation colors, but I'd have to say he's got that kind of horror movie mini comic feel. The claw hand goes into the blaster arm, which uh, it doesn't go into the regular arm. The, the claw doesn't fit. And then there's the blast, which, uh, you know, looks pretty cool. Here's a, um, another angle on the blast, and I have to say I'm really enjoying this toy. You know, you put him here against Shira. Take that, rebel scum. You know, I mean, he looks pretty cool. You know, yeah, your little sword ain't going to touch the mighty Hordak. <laughs> so there he is next to the vintage on the right and the origins on the left. And I'd have to say this Hordak is just awesome. 
I really enjoyed this toy and I'm going to continue to enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review and this style of the review where we take a trip backwards and, you know, just kind of look at the history of the characters and what they have. And you really are going to like the next one I do because we are getting into Skeletor. <laughs> so until next time.